Hi there, everybody. Um, this is going to be the first video in a, uh, an ongoing series on um, what a lot of people call uh, the Feynman integration technique or Feynman integration or the Feynman technique um, or the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign. Um, well, actually, that's just something that's used in the Feynman technique. And that's what this video is going to be about, is the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign. And we're going to be doing the simple version of it uh, that involves constants, uh, constant intervals of integration, like from A to B. There is a more generalized uh, version of it that we're not going to get into this time. It's a little bit more complicated and, well, it'll come later. So anyway... Uh, really quick, I want to uh, qualify here, uh, give you a little background um, of my, uh, my knowledge in mathematics, and my, uh, I have no qualifications. I learned everything I know about mathematics from YouTube, Wikipedia, and Google. Um, I became interested in it at about the age of 36, um, and I started uh, watching Professor Leonard's uh, YouTube channel on Calculus 1. I started there, uh, did his Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, differential equations, um, and from there uh, I, you know, learned from all the ones that you're probably familiar with, black pen, red pen, uh, the blue-brown guy, the, the bald guy, what's his name there, mathologer, uh, with the German accent, um, a whole lot of others, Dr. Pyam, flammable maths, um, and just, you know, so, so many others. Um, you're probably familiar with everybody that I've just mentioned. Anyway, um, I don't know if I said it yet, but my name is Matthew. Um, and here we go. So the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign states that if you take the derivative with respect to t of the integral from a to b of a function of x and t, which is uh, integrated with respect to x, you will get the integral from a to b of the partial derivative of that same function uh, integrated with... Oh, I think I made a mistake here. This is supposed to be an x. My apologies. And why... Um, why that's an X, why it matters that that's an X, very much so, is that I, I hope you can all, will all agree that the integral from A to B of a function of X and T integrated with respect to X will give you a function of T, which is why you can take the derivative with respect to T of that function. A um, couple things we're gonna need to know, which I'm sure you already do, we're gonna need to know the limit definition of a derivative. It's right there. If you take the derivative with respect to t of a function of t, it's equal to the limit as some uh, value h goes to 0 of that function uh, uh, evaluated at t plus h minus the function evaluated at t all over h. Again, taking the limit as h goes to 0. Second thing we're going to need to know is the limit definition of a partial derivative. Almost the same thing. It's right there. I'm not going to explain it. You probably all know it anyway. Um, so to show, I'm going to show you how to get from there to there, which is something I really had a hard time finding online. I, I had a hard time finding a good, just simple, quick explanation of how you get from there to there. Anyway, so we're going to start off with a function of t. That function of t is equal to the integral from a to b of a function of x and t integrated with respect to x. As I said, it should be obvious, well, maybe not obvious, but you shouldn't have a problem knowing why that's going to be a function of t. Because if you take uh, the derivative um, from a to b of a function that has x's and t's in it, and then integrate it with respect to x, you're going to get rid of all the x values because they're going to be filled in with your values uh, a and b and you're going to be left with nothing but t's, giving you a function of t. So what we're going to do is plug that function of t into our limit definition of a derivative. So the derivative with respect to t of that function of t, which is that thing right there, is equal to the limit as h approaches 0, the limit as h approaches 0, 
of uh, f of t plus h, that's this part right here. Should, you should be able to see why, that this is our f of t plus h, minus f of t. Again, there's our f of t. It's defined. Then we're taking it over h, as in the limit definition right here, and we're taking h going to 0. We're letting h approach 0. So you should have no problem with that step. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to bring, we're, we're going to combine these two, first of all. Um, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, using something called linearity, uh, you can combine those things to make this, the, uh, the integral from A to B of this minus this. And since you're integrating with respect to x, h is a constant, you can also bring that inside the integral. And you can see it in that step right there. Now the next step uses something called the bounded convergence theorem. And I'm going to admit that I don't know what that, I, I don't know what that is. Um, nor do I know why you need it. It seems that to me, an integral is just the sum of a bunch of stuff. And this stuff has, you know, it's going to have T's and H's in it. And then at every step along the way, you're going to be, well, you're going to be adding all those things together, the, the stuff that has uh, T's and H's in it. And then at the very end, you're going to take the limit as H approaches zero. And I think you learn pretty early on in Calc 1 when doing uh, limits that if you take the limit of something that's got H's in it, plus the limit of something that's got H's in it, plus the limit of something that's got H's in it, all of those limits going to zero, um, that you can just add up all the stuff together and then take the limit, which is, which is what I'm doing basically right here. I'm bringing the limit sign inside of the integral. Um, like I said, that technically requires something called the bounded convergence theorem. Um, look it up if you want. I think this is good enough. Um, I don't think, I don't think it's that big a stretch to bring that limit inside there. I'm sorry. Some of you, uh, real mathematicians are probably pulling your hair out right now. Um, and I apologize for that. Maybe this channel isn't for you. Um, I do mathematics for fun. Um, so I hope, oh, sorry, one last step. So you can see here, this is the limit as h approaches zero of f of x and t plus h minus f of x and t over h dx, which we define to be the partial derivative with respect to t right there. So that's how you get from there to there. I hope that was good enough. Uh, in my next video, I'm going to be actually using this to evaluate uh, some integrals that I believe would otherwise require something called contour integration, which is, well, that stuff's a mess. Anyway, see you next time.